Welcome back and to our main topic, the new cities, the fourth generation cities and the expansion in uh, the urbanization. Uh, this was our main topic and let me uh, welcome our distinguished guest, uh, Dr. Mohammed Nagib Abu Zaid, Professor of Engineering. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Right, let me start uh, with this age. I mean here that Egypt is seeing an age, uh, a golden age of building uh, new cities and coping with the uh, fourth generation construction. Um, how do you view that and how do you view the expansion of, uh, of the urbanization in Egypt? Um, I will start by saying uh, it's a very positive sign. Uh, it's actually a massive amount of work happening on so many fronts. And let's not forget that that's happening in a time that the international or the global economy is slowing down. So people in Egypt, we the Egyptian people are watching or witnessing this boom while the rest of the world is easing, either slowing down or somehow some of the projects uh, are being cancelled or postponed or, or, or. Uh, it's a fourth generation, as you properly said. It's a group or a bundle of new cities happening all over the country, geographically well distributed, uh, serving different purposes. Of course, the main goal is to serve the Egyptian people and the, the, the development of the Egyptian people, but definitely it's a new era of also construction. It's not construction, it's not more of business as usual. It's the style of work, the magnitude of work, the kind of, of technicalities used, the rate of production and advancement of work is one of the nicest and the, the, the highest that I would dare to say in the region, if not in the world. Mm. Uh, so you, you mean here that the, this uh, issue has two messages, one on, on, on the ground, while we're seeing Egypt is changing in a dramatic way, in a lovely way, and the other is a message to the world that... Definitely. I, I see as two messages, uh, and the, the most important message to me is the message to the Egyptian people themselves, is gaining confidence that we are advancing in global mega projects, uh, and that we are as the president always says, we are battling with time. Time is our first concern that we want to achieve this project in a timely manner, and we want to reach certain targets for the development and the, 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 the rate and increase uh, uh, of the, 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 uh, the national income at a rate that hopefully will be unprecedented. Of course, the whole world, including Egypt, uh, have slowed down a little bit, uh, Nokenwood, Egypt, is one of the very few countries, and that's another story, of course, that still have a had a positive kind of turnout throughout the year, a very tough year worldwide. If you talk about the different sectors on top of which come tourism, uh, uh, you know, as an example. Yeah. But definitely, the building industry, it's always said to uh, the, 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 the like locomotive of the economy. When the building industry or the construction industry booms, it pulls together the economy because there are so many integrated and interrelated industries and commodity and individual working on it. So the net result is usually the, the pulling up of the economy and the going out of a recession. That's why you'll always notice historically that whenever there is a recession, for example, in the US or elsewhere, the first indicator of there is a recession is when the construction goes down because the first thing people would postpone, they will not postpone their education, eating, and sometimes even, uh, of course, treatment and, and health issues, but they will postpone building something or buying a new thing. And the first thing that shows a boom or a outgoing of a recession, and that, that's a pattern well known worldwide, is the construction industry. So the consistency and the ability of Egypt mm -hmm. to persist and to endure and to sustain all what's going on and heading with, with these projects in, in, let's say, in a strong and uh, adamant way, I think it's a very strong message to the Egyptian people themselves that they have to build on for the future. Right. So w we spoke about it politically, we spoke about, we spoke about it, the strategic message it's given uh, and the uh, message for the Egyptian. Let me take it from the engineering point of view. And we need to understand what exactly does uh, the four generation uh, cities, the smart cities mean, and why are we doing that? 
It's a lovely question, and of course I would love to talk about this out of specialization, but I will try to simplify this a little bit. Let's take the viewers into 20, 30 years, even if they weren't around there, the, the emerging of some of the cities like 10th of Ramadan, 6th of October, and so on, and then another second generation like Badr and Abur and so on, and then a third generation which is like uh, the, the new Cairo, Tagama, al Khamis, and all these areas. A fourth generation cities is a group of cities, which is Egypt now, and there are very few of them, by the way, worldwide. I mean, the examples that we hear in Hong Kong and Dubai and so on, they are not really the fourth generation as we envision them. Fourth generation that we envision them are smart cities where you do minimal effort to get maximum outcome, uh, uh, that the, the buildings themselves, from an engineering point of view, since you asked me, are kind of interacting with those who will, would live in it. If I were to give a very simple example, if it's a hot summer day, mm. the building itself will, will shed some kind of, of, let's say, curtains or some kind of protection against the sun. And the opposite is in, in a winter time when you need the sun and so on. Mm. Will will uh, use uh, smart energy, renewable energy, all these buildings will minimize the waste. You will not see, definitely you will not see, someone standing with a hose and watering a garden or washing a car. That's, uh, even if you doubt that, but I, I assure you, it will never well, be I'm a smart not city. not doubting, I'm, I'm, I'm Skeptic. just thinking about the, no, the but, culture but, of... But, but that, that's actually, and actually you're, you're touching on that. Imagine we do all of that and we don't allocate enough time and the resources to train the people, to educate the people, to have some kind of awareness for the people. And I, I hate to say it, but also small cities all over the world, there is a very, uh, let's say, uh, tight surveillance in it. Uh, usually I don't move or I don't talk about punitive actions unless people are aware first, they, they, they do the right thing because they want to do it. But, but things are, and, and, and everywhere is, is being, uh, yeah. there is surveillance. Environmental aspects, uh, you heard so many people, the president, the prime minister, the various ministers, not just the minister of housing, talking about the green uh, uh, inlets, gardens, public gardens, uh, people spending time outdoor. Uh, of course, we appreciate that more these days because of the pandemic uh, of yeah. COVID-19, but we'll talk about it also for the future for health reasons, people having a chance to, 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 to breathe cleaner air, to have their children brought up in more of a friendly and green environment, something that most uh, of the inhabitants of Cairo are, are kind of deprived of. Deprived of. Well, since you brought up uh, the issue of future, then let me understand from you why, you know, speaking technologically wise, why new cities are seen as the future for Egypt? Uh, it's, it's a very uh, timely question actually, future of Egypt because when you build these new cities and uh, they are, mm. people always think, and, and that's a very valid concern, why we're having so many of them at the, at the same time? Why don't we build one and see if it works well then we'll build another? No, the, first of all the, the, the economy of these cities to be built in parallel is far less or, or the cost is far less Signi let me not exaggerate, significantly less when you do them in parallel than when you do them individually. It's the future of Egypt because several things will happen. Mm. We live on 7% of the uh, total uh, area of, of Egypt, which is little more than 1 million square kilometer. You are going to absorb this kind of high density into and redistribute in different uh, cities uh, across the country and not just around Cairo, because we don't want to make the mistake of having Cairo uh, inflated and inflated becomes a huge Cairo, a new Cairo, another Cairo settlements, and then you have a mega, mega city as such. So you are going to redistribute this population. You are going to, to have at least uh, numbers are between 20 and 30 million of people will be living in these places. Most importantly, you create jobs for, for people who work into developing these cities and who will work in the activities that are going to be generated by this city, by these cities. You pull uh, uh, investment on top of which the attempt of uh, uh, foreign uh, investment, which, which is the key thing that the, uh, the political leadership of the country and the country as a whole is, is working on. So that's, that's a major uh, part of having these cities and also to have these cities kind of like self-generating for funds. People 
uh, and that, that would be a mistake, but, uh, but we think that we build a city, the, the gover government or the people of Egypt will invest, 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 and then wait for the return. No, as you put money in, you, you, you sell units, you, you, you open the door for people to reserve, you, you're, you open the door for, for companies to come and have a priority at a reduced price or with, with, with kind of, of infrastructure being supplied for their factories, for shops, for their malls and so on. So you kind of generate funds and in a quick and comprehensive way. Uh, something, uh, just to end this part, uh, response for that, because it's, it's a lovely, actually, uh, area to talk uh, about in this uh, domain. These cities should talk to one another, in the sense being smart, like they connect well to each oh. other, physically and virtually. You, would, you should be able to go from one of these new cities to another, uh, not necessarily by, 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 by your car, by there are fast, train, speed, uh, means of communication, transportation. So all of them will pull themselves together and as a result, the economy, inshallah, should be flourishing in, in quite a record time. Well, we're speaking about a real future, right? Yes, yes. Uh, let me here uh, take an example of new cities, uh, an example of the smart cities that already persist now and uh, showed and it shows the new administrative capital. Mm -hmm. We've been speaking right before we uh, start our episode about a new uh, announcement. Yes. Uh, 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 before coming here to this nice uh, uh, show, I, I read today, or I followed the news that the president has also give his, has given his directives to have part of the new administrative capital is going to be like a city or community for, for justice, for uh, like 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 uh, complex for for uh, courts for uh, all uh, judicial kind of of service and so on. Uh, I, I hope not. I wish not. But many of the Egyptian people, all of us who had one in one way or another something to do, could be a simple thing. Could be uh, heaven forbid more than that in a court. You go here. You go to Mbaba. Go to Kit Kat. You go to. Uh, somewhere far away, Saf, Taman. Think of, of places outside Cairo where, where it's even difficult to reach. If you have this kind of, I would don't want to call it centralized complex of courts, uh, courts and and judicial services. Okay. Uh, the president was talking today or meeting today with with the minister of, of justice. I think the prime minister was also attending this meeting, and in that sense, you have by, by this little bit by in analogy of what I said earlier. You are, you have the services together in one place uh, and uh, you, you could achieve the things quite, let's say, uh, uh, earlier and in a good way. The efficiency, uh, uh, and mm. let me use the right word, the efficacy of, of justice is a major concern of, of the political leadership because uh, when the president started uh, being in office uh, a few years ago or some years ago, he was a bit not happy, and he rightly so, of the amount of cases that are in the pipeline, he and you and me and all the Egyptian people, oh. when something goes to the court, you say, God give me good life and my kids to, to be able to witness the outcome of this. This cannot sustain forever. You want a system, judicial system that's efficient and gives its outcome quite It accelerate with the work, instead of putting it uh, in a very slow definitely uh, yeah. definitely and and the movement and the service of that will not be directly affected by by being in the center of cairo or by being in alexandria and so on it will be a little bit more uh, efficient significantly more efficient and i would dare since you were talking about the future much of what we do because I, I i'll pick the word that you were saying with your talk with with the president of the channel uh, the the new norm the new norm the new reality will be much of what we're going to do even in the in the, in the courts will be on a virtual and uh, not necessarily physical uh, basis so from now on yes um, since you brought up the issue of courts and since you brought up the issue of uh, uh, judicial uh, and laws and all this, then would you like to um, comment on uh, the president's today uh, 
directing himself for the postponement of the mm -hmm. real estate uh, law or the enforcement of the real estate law and how the president looked at this issue from his own perspective for the sake of the citizen? Uh, a good point and uh, actually I, w I had the same thoughts uh, uh, like the ones carried in your question. Mm. Few weeks ago and maybe until a few days uh, ago, people and Egyptian people, whenever I go somewhere, and, and I kid you not, I walk somewhere, I hear people, like I hear one word from here, one word from there, and you hear the word like, like, like this issue is coming, you know, about Buy. real estate, buying, selling, registration, so on. We will do, you know, so the whole community, I kid you not, I was hearing the whole community talking about this and concerned about it. One positive sign that happened is that like five, six days ago, the Prime Minister formed a committee to, to try to ease the steps and to kind of, of uh, uh, simplify the issue a little bit for the citizens. Any government, any uh, political leadership, their main goal is to achieve development and it's not, it's not irrational to try also to bring good uh, 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 income for the for the, the the Egyptian people to be used uh, in, in some kind of, of uh, other aspects important aspects for development this particular issue the president is commended that he felt the pulse of the street and I use this expression because people were a bit concerned even with the timeline until Indeed. the end of the year you know especially that these days we are still, and, and that's another issue, of course, but we have to be still cautious because God knows what's going to happen in the next few months. Inshallah, the whole world, on top of which Egypt, inshallah, will recover and will get itself out yes. of this COVID-19. Yes. But you, 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 you cannot give yourself nine months for a real estate uh, uh, magnitude of several trillions Egyptian pounds, and you try to achieve that. People, the whole society could go in chaos. So it was very wise that it was given a two years and here's a good thing is that for a societal dialogue which means i take that as a message to open the dialogue that that the government will hear and should hear from the people itself to see what are the pros and cons and what are the best means of uh, facilitating uh, yeah, this issue for and implementation instance. let's take that as an example of responsiveness and an ability to sense the pulse of the street, responsiveness from the government, and of course, on top of that, the political leadership that felt the pulse of that, responded to that in a rational way, so as to give things enough time to materialize in a good way. Very much indeed. Getting back to what we were speaking mm -hmm. about, and um, uh, um, new cities were also speaking about the expansion of urban uh, uh, or urbanization. We're speaking about an urban uh, renaissance. We're speaking about new cities that are geographically exactly. uh, distributed, well distributed. Mm -hmm. um, we're speaking about roads, we're speaking about infrastructure, we're speaking about different uh, uh, issues that are made in parallel with the new cities. You read into this, and, and, and how is the country or the uh, government is able to do all that all together in one? What, what kind of, of, of leap are we seeing here? Uh, it's a big leap. I'll take the, the, the I'll give you a there. It's a big leap. And a big leap that needs a strong government, which inshallah will continue to have, Egypt will continue to have a strong government and of course an adamant president who is following up closely. Mm. Uh, I, I hope people would realize this is, this is a reality. Mm. We wake up every Friday morning and we hear the president at five o'clock or six o'clock who was visiting one of these projects. Every Friday. Uh, every Friday. Every where, Friday. Where people were sup are supposed to be arresting. Yes. So, uh, it's a follow-up and it's a message for everyone that we need really to speed up the, the, and it does. You asked me earlier as an engineer, I know of many of these projects because some of which also some of my students are working on them, they, they don't sleep. They, 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 they work several shifts and they are beating the time uh, uh, you know, to, to meet the, the, the schedule. 
Uh, there is an angle I would like to, to delve into when it comes to the new cities. In the mind of the Egyptian people, the new cities are communities where we'll have houses uh, and we'll have uh, some kind of clubs, schools, universities. These are, by the way, very important because yes. that, that's a guarantee for the livelihood of these cities. But some of the new cities are totally innovative, uh, unprecedented in Egypt. If I were to give an example, the new city or the new community being bil built in St. Catherine. Mm. Uh, a, a community is being built, totally integrated with the rest of, of uh, major cities in Sinai, Tur, El Arish, and, and uh, Sharm el Sheikh, and Dahab, and so on. And the purpose of which is to appreciate and to value the, 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 the religious heritage of, of Prophet, uh, Prophet Moses and of St. Catherine uh, and of uh, Moses Mountain, St. Catherine Mountain, and so on, and create one of the greatest community in one of the most blessed spots on the whole planet. Mm. So here we're talking about the city in a totally different angle and the planning for which is definitely uh, uh, will take a different creative angle from the standard kind of housing and, and cities for population and for residential building and so on. So, please go ahead. Let go of course the strategic uh, uh, importance of this area in particular, yes, speaking yes. here about Sinai. Uh, we're speaking about Sinai and, and there are so many things happening in Sinai. Uh, I had the pleasure to talk about them once here in, in, in this distinguished uh, program uh, about the, 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 the museums, about the new cities, about the, the, the universities. And here is Sinai, you cross the, 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 mm. the, the water to the other side, you'll see, for example, mm. New Galala City. And that's yeah. what I'm talking about, the integration and the connectivity between these cities. They talk to one another and they raise the value uh, of one another. Here, uh, it says that about 4,164 projects are being implemented nationwide, where for the first time the people of Egypt walk away. The newest one city, a carnation near Mansoura. Mm -hmm. And you can speak to us about this. Yes, yes, yes. A Cornish in New Alamein, uh, and another in the new city of Rashid and the Green River. All, all these that all these projects, small projects that go in line with the new cities. Uh, how or, or, or what does this reflect? What is the real objective of of such small projects beside the mega ones? The, uh, First of all, let me say they are not really small, but they are you know, in comparison. That's what you meant, of course, with the big cities. Yes. They may appear a little bit less in magnitude. Mm. I will take a very uh, simple but nice example. Uh, I know you are well traveled. I know many of the viewers traveled here and there. You get up in the morning in any major city in the world. You can walk by in the central park and walk in the, in the Hyde Park and walk by the River Seine in France. You can walk somewhere like that. Mm. This is just a very simple example. Today in Cairo, where would you do that? You try to go, if, if things remain the way they are, you try to go by, by, by the River Nile or you are going to walk in the street. In many places there are no pavement even to walk on or sidewalks. But what we're talking about here, creating, for example, a whole pathway across the River Nile, part of which started not far away from us here in Mespiro is between the 15th of May uh, uh, bridge and Imbaba bridge, which is almost terminated, where you'd have a nice pathway that you would walk, you will use your bicycle, you will jog, you will exercise. You, you will feel the beauty of one of the most sacred rivers on, again, planet Earth and it's one of the most treasured value of the country of Egypt. So beauty has a value, uh, health and environment has definitely a much added value, and these projects increase and enhance and support the value of these new cities and make them more marketable and more attracting to inhabitants and to investment. But well, you have already propagated them. <laughs> yeah, and I, I only have one minute left for me here and I need a conclusion or a message that we can come out with today from speaking about how Egypt 
is moving on. Uh, without any exaggeration, Egypt, like the rest of the world, is going through major challenges. Uh, this project that we talked about today uh, represent uh, a major leap, and I use the same word that we used, a leap forward, carry a lot of hope, a better future, and will particularly for the youngsters and for the young generation, for the youth of Egypt, it will guarantee better jobs, mm. healthier life, and an environment that they should be proud of that has started today. Uh, what we're talking about is materializing. People have to believe in these projects and we we'll have to support them. And inshallah, as it was mentioned before, mm. it's the, 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 the worst is behind us and the future, inshallah, will carry much more positive things to come. Yes, plus it's uh, uh, very attractive for foreign uh, investments, foreign and domestic investments. I, 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 I will say one sentence, not lo too long ago, two weeks. Several people from different countries told me that we in the West, we feel we're going like this, th their future because of what happened, especially after Corona and so on. And we feel and we know that Egypt is going like that. Hopefully. Inshallah. So Hopefully. We, we, we hope this will it's be God's the case. Will. Dr. Mohammed Nagiba was a professor of engineering. Thank you so much for being with us and for your input tonight. Thank you and pleasure to be here. Always. Though a short period, but too much or too many information. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having me. Uh, dear viewers, many thanks for watching. Tomorrow will be another debate with another colleague. Good night.